At the height of the property boom, Northern Ireland was one of the biggest winners. With house prices rising faster than anywhere else in the UK. In Belfast, many first time buyers couldn't afford central locations, so they started to look further afield where housing is cheaper. Shana and Mairead Billings are both teachers. They bought their first home together on a brand new development in the small town of Coal Island. Stress free life in the countryside, and that basically you could afford a better life than maybe city life itself. Three bedrooms, um, upstairs, downstairs, toilets, lovely fireplace, wooden floors. The house cost £175,000 and they got a mortgage for the full amount. This would be our one here. I mean, we thought we'd uh, hit the jackpot. That was us set and ready to move on with our lives. It's just kind of went from worse to worse. The town of Coal Island is 35 miles west of Belfast city centre. And Mairead and Shana are on their way there. The development was going to be finished within a few months and there was a lot of interest in the houses and there were um, sold signs um, around the place. It's a lovely house, especially for a first-time buyer. The beginnings of a, a lovely area. The completed development was to have over 70 homes. But some were never finished, and only a few were ever sold. This is the development. This is the first phase, and there's a couple of families in this area. There's one or two. There's still a couple of houses that, are, that have been left. I mean, you can see these houses here just near right. It's going to rack and ruin. It's been left. This is the second phase. This is the second phase coming out. This house in front of you is, would have been our house. They moved in in January 2008, but their neighbours never did. They realised that none of the other houses on their terrace had been sold. And because the houses were left empty, Pretty soon they were vandalised. Red's not too fast in coming out because she doesn't want to go around it. Um, this would have been our house here, so you can see them saving the houses next to it. That's the damage and, all, and that that's been done to them, even the front windows. I mean, that's a bit of new damage. And... Fireplaces ripped off and skirting boards taken up, doors taken off. I mean, you just see the vandalism and the theft that's going on around the place, even the window. That one had a soul sign, but nobody ever did move it. Oh, please. Destroy it. They bought the house in summer 2007 before the property market crashed. But when they moved in six months later, Northern Ireland's giant boom was going bust. Building work on the next phase of the development ground to a halt. And the vandalism was making the area more and more run down. This gradually got worse and worked, worked its way down closer and closer and closer to us. So, I mean, it got the stage where we were living in the house and the damage had been done the next door as well. So. You were worried if you were going to be sitting in the living room and there was going to be a brick coming through your window. I mean, even just being here is just upsetting. I mean, you can just... Even the houses behind, right behind, they're just completely vandalised. And 12, 13, 14 houses gone, they're racking room. And vandals weren't the only unwelcome visitors. Our house was at the end house, and we had our heating on. We got it. All the rodents um, from the rest of the area coming up to our house because obviously after the heat or whatever. But I mean, stages during the night you could just hear them. It sounded like 40 mice or something running through the, the attic. A 
After six months of living in misery and fear, things got so bad they had to move out. It's been months since they've seen the house, and Maraid's agreed to have one last look. This would have been the window for the downstairs toilets, and there was plenty of room. You can just see the grass around here and the space that there was. I think probably one good memory was at probably the first day, yeah, we got our own house, and then that was it. First day. But since then, it was just downhill ever since. So it's months of living here, coming home from work, a hard day's work, and, and to come home to this, you just drive you nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't expect to live here and raise a family. It's just, there's no way that's possible. Just we're on our own, so you have nobody around you, and you know, we just you're looking at that every single morning. It's a nightmare. Well, if there's plenty of neighbours here, like you would have been a nice atmosphere around the place. It's nothing but a pigsty now. It's a dump. Ghost estates like this aren't unusual in Ireland. According to reports, there are 621 of them. During the boom years, around 200,000 new homes were built, but never sold. And now, one in every five Irish homes is unoccupied. For the last 18 months, Mairead and Shayna have been renting this house just outside Belfast. And they're both working full time. They've got a £175,000 mortgage on a home they can't live in, and they can't sell. So at just 29 years old, they've made a life-changing decision. They're going bankrupt and having the home they once owned repossessed. Uh, enough was enough, and I refused to pay the thousand pound a month um, for basically a house that we were too afraid to live in. We didn't do anything wrong. Never defaulted on a payment. Wanted to make the house in Quailand a home, start a family. We're basically left with nothing now. I still feel ashamed. I still feel a lot of shame, and I don't know why because I know it wasn't our fault. But I think that it's just. It still is a dirty word. It's now the morning of their bankruptcy hearing. This is this was a, a last resort, the, the final choice that was given to us. The only choice. The only choice, really. Was. It's the last thing we wanted. But we did everything. We did everything. All the doors were shut in our face. Just angry. Just numb. So many. Just, I mean, it's just everything. I mean, it feels feels good that this is in a way that we might get some end to this, but in the long run, I mean, it's for us, it's not so. of justice in Belfast is where their bankruptcy case is being heard. There are more than 60,000 bankruptcy cases a year in the UK and the number is rising. Once Mairead and Shana are made bankrupt, it'll have a serious impact on their future. Their bank accounts will be frozen and they'll find it hard to get credit. I mean, just after two minutes, just flick through the pages and say, right, OK, we can see you. We can see that you're not, you're not fraudulent. It's just say, from now, you're bankrupt, and the official receiver will be in touch with you. I really want to just forget about it now and never go near that place again. And 
you know, I just, just want to be done with now. In a horrible way, it is a, it is a good thing for us. I mean, and say it, and all you need to do now is just move on to lie on to it. Move on, yeah. Start uh, Enjoy my life. <laughs> Tell anybody enjoy my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, just uh, move on and see where it, see where we go. I mean, uh, we've been together a long time, and I think we can, we'll still be together in a lot of years to come. Yes.